Hey, Ray from LoveYourRV.com here, and today I am going to install two more Renogy solar panels on my roof. Uh, if you saw my video last year, I had installed the 200 watt kit from Renogy, and I was really happy with that during our boondocking in the southwest. So this year I want to add some more solar. Um, previously I had updated our battery bank to four golf cart batteries from two, so now I'm going to add two more 100 watt panels. So I dropped by Renogy and picked up uh, these two 100 watt panels to go with my other 100 watt panels. Got a good deal on them, about 130 something dollars each. So what I basically did is I bought the same stuff that came in the previous kit minus the charge controller. So I've got the wire to go from the solar panels down to my where the charge controller is in the battery area and that used about 15 feet so that's a 10 gauge wire and I'm just gonna rather than put a junction box up on top I'm just gonna run another set of wires down and put a, a combiner box right by the charge controller and I got the connectors Y connectors to connect the two panels into uh, one one wire run so all these are going to be wired in parallel. They're all 12 volt panels. And then I've got some of the Z brackets, or as us Canadians call them, Z brackets. And uh, they worked really well on the roof. Uh, the panels are, are still securely attached up there. So I'm going to go with the same mounting system. So we'll uh, head up on the roof and show you where I'm going to put them. First I'll attach the Z brackets before I get the panels on the roof. They're fairly straightforward to do. A nut and bolt, a couple washers, and a locked locking washer. Pretty simple. These are the ones from Renogy, so they're made to attach right to their panels. Up on the roof now, there's my previous install and I'm going to put them on this side of the roof so that uh, I'll have uh, four panels right on the front of the fifth wheel here. I like to uh, point the fifth wheel into the sun when I'm boondocking so this will be pointed into the midday sun and get the max uh, solar. Also it turns out it's the best way to keep our rig cool pointing the, the front end of the fifth wheel into the midday sun. So, let me get to it. I'll have to mark, mark out the, the mounting holes there, and I usually drill a, a 1 8 uh, pilot hole. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is kind of lay it out where I want the panel, and then underneath I'm going to put some uh, Dicor, or uh, a Turnabon tape, just like I did here. See here, it does two things. It uh, kind of protects the rubber roof from the, the bracket cutting into it and also when the screw goes through it'll kind of help seal the screw with the with the die with the Eternabond sealant at the back so it's just uh, some people will put uh, um, butyl tape under I like to do it this way so I'm just going to mark that out with a, a marker then I can put down the, the um, a turn it on and then we'll uh, start marking out our screw holes and drilling some pilot holes. So for mounting the panels I just use the, the Z brackets and then what I do is I lay down the Eternabon and then I put some Dicor lap sealant under the, the bracket and I dip the screws that came with the, the brackets in a Eternabon or Dicor sealant as well. Then I'll screw them down. I won't over tighten them just until they're tight but still holding a bite. And then of course I, I cover it with with more Dicor. Now this will probably vary with what type of roof you have. I have a, a walk-on type fifth wheel roof. Um, I believe it's about a 3 8 piece of board under there so uh, it's held quite well. Um, these panel, other panels I had, they, they don't even budge. They're like on there solid. And that's a year of use. I've done a lot of boondocking. I've 
driving in windy windy storms with about 30 35 mile an hour wind straight into it um, I've gone down rough roads really heavy you know gravel washboard roads and they're still tight as can be so I'm going to stick with that method I'm sure there's all kinds of other fasteners you could get to go into the wood you just have to uh, go with what you believe is best um, on the front there I'm I'm probably catching one of the rafters underneath the front it seems to the screws seem to bite quite well there okay I'll tighten those down then I can start putting the second panel on Okay, I finished them up yesterday and put a coating of uh, Dicor sealant on all the mount points. There we go. Looks pretty good. Those are solid. So if your uh, roof is a bit thinner or you're paranoid about the panels lifting, um, there's a product called Well Nuts, and it's kind of a plastic sleeve that goes in there, and then you uh, put a, put a screw into that, and it kind of expands against the board. <coughs> um, like I say, these other two panels I've had for quite a while and been in all kinds of conditions, and they haven't budged so. I'm okay with the way I've done it, but uh, if I did find them loosening, I could always go with that. Another product I heard about is is a 3M adhesive tape, and they use those a lot on like fiberglass roofs or something where they don't want to put holes in their roof, and they just tape the the um, mounts down. So that's another option. But uh, this is what works for me. And so, uh, yeah, it's nice. The whole front's covered there. They're slightly tilted. So uh, when I'm pointed into the sun, I get a little bit of tilt. And also, it frees up the rest of my roof. I can walk around and access, access everything else quite easily. I don't have to worry about shadows. Like you see, here's a TV antenna shadowing. There's all kinds of shadows going on. But uh, on the front, I'm not going to have any shadow problems. There's nothing to shadow those panels which is a good thing. Um, for the wires I did the same thing I did last time some of that Eternabond tape. They're quite you know they're not heavy heavy wires I don't have a huge system so the, the tape holds them down quite nicely and uh, when it goes in between the panels I also use some tape for some of the wire runs. Um, I forgot to show you how I actually hooked them together but they came with some uh, yeah, I think they're MC4 connectors and they were like a, a Y connector and uh, it makes it easy just to clip them together to they're a waterproof connector and uh, so underneath the panels is a, a couple of those oh here comes the train anyway let's, uh, let's hang on a sec let the train go by so here's where my uh, wiring goes down and if you watched the last video you know I found a channel in the bathroom wall. This is a vent pipe for the black tank so it follows along the same channel that the vent pipe goes down. I haven't finished this yet because this vent pipe I'm going to swap to a uh, 360 siphon vent. This is your stock vent pipe um, outlet. If you see over here in a previous video I showed you how I installed that and it uh, creates a vortex vacuum effect and actually keeps your uh, tanks from smelling bad. So I'm going to get one of those, it's on the way being shipped. So I don't want to start sealing all that up until, uh, until I get that installed. I'm not too worried about rain right now, we're in uh, sunny Palm Springs. Forecast is five straight days of sun. so. I should have time, but uh, when I did that, I drilled an extra uh, 
enlarged the hole and I made uh, quite the boo-boo down below. Of course, I missed the channel, so uh, let's go down and show you that stuff. Okay, so I'm just in the bathroom area here, and you can see that's where I missed. I was supposed to be on that side of the wall, and I missed with my drill. And I thought, oops, that wasn't too bad. I could put some kind of plastic cover over that. So I just started feeding the wires into the wall, and then they got all jammed up in there. I, suddenly I couldn't get them in or out and they wouldn't fall down the wall to the bottom where I wanted to pull them out. Probably because this vanity is screwed into the wall and there's some screws there and they got all jammed up so uh, things got worse. So I get an access panel in my toilet area. Once I got the access panel I could go in here and uh, straighten things out, send them down the wall. Oops. Anyway, my bright idea now is I'm getting a uh, battery monitor, Trimetric, and that'll be a nice place to install it. Cover that hole, to kill two birds with one stone, cover the hole, and also a nice place to run my uh, control wire back to the batteries from my uh, toilet area. So once I got it into the wall, same as before, I dropped it down the wall under the sink and it came out at a point right where the the vent pipe for the the sink was going up then dropped it straight down behind the plumbing and out where the plumbing pipe comes out of the basement so i'll go down there and show you where that goes okay it's my basement storage up front you can see where the wires come down same as last time so i just uh Zap strapped them to the existing pair of wires I had from the first two panels and just had to drill one more hole to get the wires into the front storage compartment where the batteries are. So let's go in there and uh, hook, hook up the wires to the charge controller. Okay, I'm down in the front storage compartment where my batteries and inverter and charge controller live and I'm going to combine the wires down here I thought about maybe doing a little junction box down here, but instead I decided to, to just solder them together. So we'll have the, the second run of wires, and I'll just parallel them, par parallel them together and just wrap the other wire with solder. And uh, I think that'll make a really good connection. I won't have to worry about a junction box and corroding terminals and stuff like that. So I've done the, the negative one already, added some heat shrink tubing on it. Now I'm just going to do the, the positive side. Same deal. There we go. All back hooked up into the charge controller. So now I have two positive wires coming down from each set of solar panels combined through the 30 amp fuse and into my controller and then this is the ground wires combined and into the controller. So that's about a, thir that's a 30 amp fuse so uh, I don't think my four panels are ever going to put out 30 amps, but if they do and it pops out, I can always increase it a little bit, but I think that that should be okay. So uh, I don't want to do too much more because this controller is going away, and I'm going to get a, uh, a controller from Bogart. Uh, Bogart makes a trimetric monitor, battery monitor system, so I'm investing in one of those so I know what's going on with my solar power and battery capacity and I'm gonna get their controller I think it's a SC2030 that uh, works with their trimetric I'm gonna install both of those with uh, with the shunt for the meter and also a temperature compensation probe um, that will adjust the charging based on the temperature of my batteries but that's for another day this is this is complete what I wanted to do right now get those other two panels on so now I'm up to 400 watts of uh, solar capacity up there there we are looks pretty cool actually oh yeah right on so you can see by mounting them right up front there on the Cougar, 
and going down that, that vent, I have quite a short run right into the battery compartment at the front there where the batteries are. I think I'm down to around 15 feet of wire. So those, each of those two panels has a 10 gauge and uh, so there's two runs of 10 gauge. I think if you do the math or whatever it might come down to comparable to running an 8 gauge wire about 15 feet. I think I should have thick enough wire. We'll see. I'll definitely be testing it out soon. So, uh, so the next time I'll be installing that uh, trimetric battery monitor in my uh, Bogart uh, charge controller system. That's going to be really fun. Get to play around with that, learn the programming, all sorts of cool stuff to learn. So, thanks for watching. This is uh, Ray from uh, Love You RV. Having a great time here in Palm Springs, but uh, can't wait to get back out boondocking again. Cheers.